Thanks. It's good to see you. Do you want to jump right in? If everything's recording okay. Yeah, everything's yeah. recording and it's doing good. Well, thanks for doing this. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to, to be doing something with you. Well, the first thing I want to know is when you went to the high school and you were doing your performance art, I just yep. read that in an interview and it's hysterical. And I was wondering if you could, I was just, I was cracking up so much, you know. So the Doug um, High School reunion? Yes, yes. <laughs> I was kind of out of my mind in, in those days. Yeah, that, that was probably my favorite, though, of the, my old uh, performances. You know, I had been doing, like, blowing myself up with the bands before. And so these, uh, these fans that would come to all the shows, they got invited to their high school reunion, and there was one, <laughs> one guy that kind of looked a little bit like me. <laughs> And he had died in a car accident. Oh, five years and uh, I don't know. I got it in my head that I should go to the high school reunion disguised as Doug <laughs> Sprague. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I put uh, non-flexible colonial scars on my face. And, you know, but wore a leisure suit with uh, the name tag for <laughs> Doug Sprague. <laughs> I don't know. I got in touch with all my old classmates and um, the night ended with a bang to say the least. But... So all the kids in the audience thought you were. They thought I was Frank and um, you know what? I was talking with the high school president for a while and uh, you know, he must have read about uh, the car accident. Oh. So he was like, oh, Doug, you know, I seem to remember, you know, reading about that horrible accident. So I think he, he thought he read it wrong or something. So he goes, and, oh, that you were Doug and that you lived through the horrible car. He accident. thought I was Doug the whole time. I was really <laughs> sad to read that, that horrible accident you were in. <laughs> But as soon as he brought that up, I was like, oh. <laughs> I was, oh, Doc, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Hey, get this man a drink. <laughs> what did you use to blow yourself up with? Oh, I, all kinds of um, like fireworks that I had collected. I made my own squibs. And, you know, it was kind of a Good mad time. Version. Did, did blood come out and stuff? Uh, no, but smoke and cacophony. I had a, a, a cookie tin that I put on my chest. And, uh -huh. uh, and I, I taped them all onto this cookie tin and then put all my clothes over top. You know, all I needed to do was set my shirt on fire and then uh, that lit, and then they all blew up. Did it really look like you got blown up? Yeah. It was cacophony smoke and I'm black. Yeah. You know, and singed and and in the cacophony of smoke, I was like, yeah, hey, had a great high school reunion. Let's do it again. <laughs> and everyone's like, hey. <laughs> What I love about your artwork is that they're kind of like little movies. Yeah. You know, and your eye on the detail. Yeah. 
you know, there was just such great stuff. Great. Unless you're in the know, you don't really get. It's for me. So it's, you know, it's up to the, the viewer to dig around. And the more that they look, the more that they find, you know, and the more that it tells a story to them in a non-sequential way. Because in a painting, you can start on the left side, the right side, the center. But the more that you dig, the more that the story is revealed to you. So that brings me to my next question, Joe. When are you going to do a Please Kill Me? <laughs> you, can have, you can have Hilly in one corner and, you know, Seymour yeah. Stein in the other. Well, oh, Hilly, yeah. Yeah, I knew Hilly back when Steel Tips. I remember to, Steel Tips. Yeah, we used to be like a house band at CBGB's. I know. I was there every night. One day I might want to do a you know a painting you know of that of that particular era. I mean, I was painting you know street scenes and and things that happened you know in the Lower East Side, but I didn't actually record you know the music maybe because I was too involved in it at the time. But maybe it's something I might consider doing now. You know, I didn't think I was going to do Hunter Thompson back then, even though. He was a part of my teenage years, but only later in my mid to late 60s. Now Hunter's part of my pantheon. Yeah. It's yeah. part of a, a crazy night that we spent together, too, Hunter and I, that I guess made me really decide to finally do it. And well, can you tell me about that night? Uh, yeah. Johnny Depp was premiering the New York premiere of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. And then this wild party after. Hunter was there, obviously, and so was Benicio Del Toro and uh, Iggy Pop, a dear, dear friend of mine, too, an amazing inspiration. We were sitting, you know, watching this movie. I think I was sitting next to Johnny's sister and... Hunter was sitting directly behind me. And then Johnny was somewhere to the right. And Johnny was doing this great imitation of Hunter on the screen. And then Hunter was right behind me, heckling the screen constantly. <laughs> and like screaming. And the sounds though, the, the voices kind of like, you know, had a remarkable, like a mirror effect and I I guess the acid didn't hurt any but <laughs> we, we all went to a place called Jezebel's and it just got crazier and crazier and then Whitney and I woke up the next day and Whitney's body was covered with uh, these uh, magic marker happy faces <laughs> like <laughs> And back then, you didn't have the immediate gratification of, a, you know, your phone taking a picture. So, but, you know, we had film. And when we developed the film, there was Hunter Thompson, like, drawing the <laughs> faces all over. I wasn't going to paint him back then, you know, these many years since he's been dead before painting him. Did it just seem too trendy for you or, or something or too... Maybe it was too, it seemed too obvious a choice yeah. at that because I never wanted to choose the obvious choice, you know. And Hence I, Rondo Hatton in the corner of that painting. Well, well, <laughs> Rondo Hatton was not the obvious choice when I first did Rondo Hatton. <laughs> There's very few people that actually knew who Rondo Hatton was. It's a creeper. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, the creeper and voted the most handsome member of his high school. You know, was, and, he, was he really? He 
it's an amazing story. He's been like a peripheral character in many paintings, but I haven't done the entire Rondo Hatton story yet. Unlike Johnny Eck, who I did a really beautiful entire life story of Johnny Eck, you know, the half man from Freaks. At that time, I just needed to do Johnny and I couldn't get Johnny out of my head and I just had to do Johnny Eck. And then I became friends with Jeff Gordon, who had this amazing archive of Johnny Eck, like all of his diaries. And I was able to read like the things that were going on in his head. And I put all that text into the painting right from Johnny's hand. Wow. To have that archive at my disposal was what it needs to make paintings like that. This one, too, I had an amazing access to archival stuff. Of hunters? Of hunters, yeah. If you look at the painting, I mean, these are all shells shot by Hunter. This is his press cards, his corporate account card. This press card has Hunter's autograph on it. Wow, wow. These are paper clips that held his documents together. Uh-huh. This is one of his filters for his cigarettes. And this is a cocaine vial. For still <laughs> and then you see the painting, you know, and the painting is so minute. And yeah. Where did you get this ephemera? from an amazing archive that Joe Yuzinski has built up. He's the one that uh, talked me into it. This is Al Farm up here. I don't know if you've ever gone. Woody Creek. I mean, there's so many things. This is his son, Juan. I mean, you can get lost in here. This is the decadence of the Kentucky Derby, which is how Hunter and Ralph Steadman first got together. Deborah Fuller, probably one of the least appreciated and one of the, the closest people to Hunter. There's secrets and there's, there's love. And wow. this is what a lot of people don't know. At age 17, Hunter was involved in a robbery with the rich kids of Louisville Male High School, a school he attended for his intellectual prowess. The rich kids got off. Hunter spent his graduation in the Jefferson County Jail on a six-week sentence. He never graduated. One of the most influential of his time, never even graduated high school. And that's him looking out from the cell. And here's Anita. That's his widow, still alive. She's an amazing person. She left the Al Farm home almost exactly as it was after Hunter's suicide. You know, it's so it's so powerful to walk on the grounds in, in the home. And I thank her so much for her help with the painting. 